Hello, it is Tuesday, April 9th, and we have a different kind of assignment from our author, Mark Moore, as we're reading through Quest 52, learning about the life of Jesus. We're in a new section now, and in fact, I'm going to say it wrongly if I don't read it. Section 2, the power of Jesus. We met Jesus, who he is, and now this, this chapter this week starts the power of Jesus. And here's the assignment on page 91. The Song of Solomon is a romantic love poem. Many church fathers, however, read it as an allegory of Christ and the church. Try that. Read Song of Solomon, chapter 5, and see what metaphors you could relate to your relationship with Christ. Well, let's do it. I have chapter 5 of the Song of Solomon open. Let me read. And as we read through, I'll tell you what occurs to me about how this could relate to Jesus and the church. I, if you haven't read the Song of Solomon before, it, it's a love story, a husband and a wife. And they speak, and also there is a, a choral group that speaks. And in this translation, they have those uh, designated. And so I, I will say who was speaking when it changes. Song of Solomon, chapter 5. He says, the groom, I have come to my garden, my sister, my bride. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. This is poetry, obviously, isn't it? Then the friends speak. Eat, friends, and drink. Drink your fill of love. Then she, the bride, says, I slept but my heart was awake. Listen, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. My head is drenched with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. So the groom is wanting to see his bride. He has come from outside. He's, uh, he's drenched with dew, so he's been outside during the night and he's ready to be with his bride. Verse 3, this is still the bride speaking. I have taken off my robe, must I put it on again? I have washed my feet, must I soil them again? My beloved thrust his hand through the latch opening. My heart began to pound for him. I rose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with flowing myrrh on the handles of the bolt. She wants to be with him too. And She's prepared. Her feet are washed. She is opening now for her husband. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. Just as Jesus desires the church, the church desires Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. And, and, we don't always get to be close to Jesus as we would like to feel that we are. The watchmen found me, and they made their rounds in, as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me, they bruised me, they took away my cloak, those watchmen of the walls. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my beloved, will you tell him, tell him that I am faint with love. It is a beautiful love story, and we know that Solomon didn't know about the church. He lived uh, more than 900 years before the church began. But how clever of the Lord to use this story, and I, I agree with the, the Bible students who say this is very easily a, a love song between Jesus and his bride, the church. So she sends a message to him, I am faint with love. Do you love Jesus that way? This, this is the way we're supposed to feel toward our Savior. The friends now speak. How is your beloved better than others, most beautiful of women? How is your beloved better than others that you so charge us? Note, she's the most beautiful among women. I, the church is that beautiful for Jesus. He's the one who made his church uh, to, to have clean linen, without spot or wrinkle or any similar thing to that. And now she responds, 
My beloved is radiant and ruddy, outstanding among 10,000. His head is pure as gold. His hair is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the water streams, washed in milk, mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice, yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies, dripping with myrrh. His arms are rods of gold set with topaz. His body is like polished ivory, decorated with lapis lazuli. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as its cedars. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, this is my friend, daughters of Jerusalem. She describes him as manly, as attractive, as strong. Um, obviously, he would be a good protector. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to look on Jesus and see him as our sweetheart, the one who came to us, the one who made us pure enough to be together with him. And that's chapter 5 of the Song of Solomon. I hope that you have read it. If, if you haven't, well, I read it for you. <laughs> but may your heart be tuned to Jesus just as I want my heart to be tuned to desiring Jesus just as a lonely bride wants her husband to come home and be with her. Let's pray. How wonderful, how great, how powerful, how unimprovable un Jesus is, Father. Thank you that he is our Savior. Thank you that he is powerful. He is manly. He is everything that a bride would want in a husband. He is a provider. He is a protector. Jesus is the one that we long for. Jesus is the one we are in love with. We look forward to his returning to be with us and to take us home to be with him, to be with you forever. Father, may not only our, our minds desire Jesus, may our hearts yearn for him. May our actions reflect our devotion to him. And may we all rejoice when the sky splits, the trumpet sounds, and Jesus returns to get us because we belong to him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So that's the, the assignment for today. Church, until we're together again, you are sent. May your day be a Jesus-loving day.